Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation with base 10. We have x plus log x equals 11. And in this case, log x means log x with base 10. Even though the base is not written, it's base 10. It's not the natural log. Because I would be using ln for natural log. Unfortunately, Wolfram Alpha uses log for natural log which is kind of weird, but hey, what can you do about it? So we have this equation, x plus log x equals 11, and we're going to be solving for x values, as well as look at a couple different graphs. So to be able to solve this problem, I kind of want to get rid of the log. So let's go ahead and do this. And obviously we can solve this problem in more than one way. Let's see how many we can come up with, but I'm just going to get started. I want to do 10 to the power on both sides okay so in other words if x plus log x is equal to 11 then 10 to the power that is going to equal 10 to the power 11 would you agree i hope you do now the exponents are added so that calls for multiplication and then here we notice that a power of 10 is being multiplied by a power of 10 and giving us a power of 10 that kind of makes sense right Good, but we're going to make it a little better. One thing we need to do here is use some of the identities or properties of logarithms. For example, we can't really simplify 10 to the power x because that's what it is, but we can simplify 10 to the power log x because 10 to the power log x is actually, when written explicitly, it just means 10 to the power log x with base 10. So we have the same base. You know what that means? they cancel out because they're kind of like inverse operations think about it so when you're logging some number with base 10 you're basically answering the, or asking the question 10 to the power what number equals that x right and then you're doing 10 to the power that number which should give you x so this should be x really yeah they do cancel out but if you really want to prove that this is the case you can go ahead and call this something else like we don't know what it is it's called that y and then we can actually after calling this y we can go ahead and log both sides right because if two things are equal their logs are equal and it actually comes from the fact that the graph of log x is one to one or even better it's a bijection uh, because it's always increasing of course if the base is less than one then it's always decreasing but again it's always okay now you go ahead and move this to the front log x multiply by log 10 equals log y and then log 10 is 1 so we can totally forget about it and log x equals log y and that just implies x equals y or y equals x so whatever you called y is the same thing as x in other words 10 to the power log x is equal to x okay makes sense great so that's a really nice shortcut and that's what we're going to use here and we also have 10 to the power x so this gives us x times 10 to the power x equals 10 to the power 11. Obviously, I wanted to write the x first because that, that fits a certain format that I'm going to be using. So there's, a, there's, diff uh, diff there's different ways to look at it. One method would be try to guess, right, obviously. And if the answer is an integer or a rational number, then my guessing might be easy. But if it's not, then it's not going to be nice. But think about it. Can it be like an irrational number in this case kind of hard right but anyways so we can go ahead and now try to guess based upon a couple facts for example this is a power of 10 remember i i already talked about it this is a power of 10 so i'm thinking maybe x should also be a power of 10 right let's isolate x let's divide both sides by 10 to the power x so we're going to get x equals 10 to the power 11 minus x upon division and then you're thinking, okay, we want x to be a power of 10, so can x be 10 or any power of 10? Well, this story continues like this. You can call, go ahead and replace x with 10 to the power n and then try to solve for n, but that's going to take forever, right? So we might as well just guess the answer. So in this case, I'm thinking uh, 1 is a power of 10 as well, so it's 10 to the power 0. Can x be a 1? Give it a try. 10 to the power 11 minus 1 is equal to 10 to the power 10. Does that equal 1? No, that's not true. What if x is equal to 10? 10, 10 to the power 1. 
Then if you replace x with 10 on the right hand side, you're going to get this. This is 10 to the power 1, which is 10. Yay, x equals 10 works. Awesome. We got a solution case closed. We can go home. No, not really. Guessing is a good idea, but you kind of also need to show that there are no other solutions. But at least we found one solution, which is pretty good. And you could have guessed that at the very beginning too, because think about it. X plus log X is equal to 11. And you could even think about it this way. If you want log X to be an integer, then X needs to be a power of 10. So let's go ahead and uh, replace X with 10 to the power Y. And don't replace X with anything here. So it's going to be like X plus Y equals 11. So basically looking at two numbers whose sum is 11. And I mean, if you want, you can replace, I guess, X with 10 to the power Y, but it's not super necessary. And then you can kind of play with this, like can X be 0 and Y be 11? It's not going to work. And, you know, just keep, oh, by the way, Y is 10. Okay, what is Y? <laughs> That's a good question, right? From here, Y is going to be log X. Okay, great. So if X is 0, it's not even defined. So we shouldn't use X equals 0. Never mind. But the minimum value that I'm going to use is probably the minimum lowest integer is X equals 1. If X is, I should probably point this way. If X is equal to 1, then log X is equal to 0, but their sum does not equal 11. You see, that makes that means I have to make X bigger. But if, if I make the X a little bigger, then it's not going to work because, you know, log 2 is not going to be 9. You see what I'm saying? It's not going to work unless you go to 10 and 1. Okay, that again verifies that x should be a power of 10. Okay, but let's go ahead and look at it pro from another angle. Uh, let's pick it up from here. x times 10 to the x equals 10 to the 11. So we're going to put it in a format where we can kind of apply a special function. Did you guess what it is? Okay. Hopefully you did. I'll tell you at the end. Uh, but here's my goal. 10, I'm going to write it as e to the power ln 10 because that's what it is. And it's going to give me x times e to the power ln 10 to the power x equals 10 to the power 11. And then I'm going to multiply the exponents and then switch this around so that I can kind of write it like this. x times, well, I think I'm almost done. So here's what I need to do. Multiply both sides by ln 10 because here's what I want to do. I want to get something like t e to the t so I can apply Lambert's W function and get t as an outcome, which is going to be super nice, right? Now, how can I put this in that format? My t is going to be this one because x ln 10 is obviously uh, bigger than x or it has more factors, whatever. So multiply both sides by ln 10. Okay. So you're going to get that. And now apply your Lambert W whatever thingy, W on both sides, W here as well. This is going to give us the T, which is X ln 10. But we still have to worry about this one, right? So how do I put it in a nice form? And you can actually do this. 10 to the power 11 is actually 10 times 10 to the power 10. So let's go ahead and do this. 10 times 10 to the power 10 times ln 10. So go ahead and take this 10, bring it over here. You're going to get 10 to the 10 times ln 10 to the 10. And here's where the hocus pocus comes in. We're going to write this as ln 10 to the 10 times e to the power ln 10 to the 10. Because x is e to the ln x, right? And that's your x right there. Or y, or z, or t, whatever. So this is x ln 10, and we're so close. We got another t here, that's my new t, and that's going to be x ln 10 equals, from here basically you're going to get ln 10 to the power 10. But again, how do you solve this problem? You can divide both sides by ln 10, but how do you simplify this? Good question. I would say properties of logarithms, right? And how do you use that? You can go ahead and bring this to the front, 10 ln 10, divide by ln 10, cross out the tens, ln 10s, and you'll get x equals 10. After so much work, but at least we use the function. Hey, right? That would be somewhat special. All right, great. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results. Uh, I'll show you, like I said earlier, I'll be showing you some um, stuff. Let's go ahead and take a look. And these two graphs, first of all, this would be the graph of uh, x plus log x. 
and that's y equals 11 and as you can see that is our intersection point and another graph would be x 10 to the x and we basically want this to be 10 to the power 11 and 10 to the power 11 is pretty large but one thing that I really liked from alpha about is that it kind of scales the coordinate system properly and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe I'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye